cool. Well, sorry for the delay. The digital native experienced problems with the technology. <laughs> yeah, my topic today is web technology suddenly makes print, how print CSS can change the industry. This is, of course, a daring, ambitious title. This is my thesis that it will change the industry, but we can argue about it a little later. Fact is that we, as Morintag, we're four people. We do print CSS in practice. I'm not a coder. I can do a little print CSS, but when a programmer here is in the audience, please don't flood me with complex questions. In my lecture, I want to describe what print CSS is, what the potential is, and what it can do. But before we get started, I would like to briefly shake you up because um, I knew it's gone the, uh, the last uh, presentation. Who had coffee this morning? Fine, many. Have you met somebody new today? Also many. Have you opened a PDF file? Now we're getting to the topic. Some. Have you looked at a website today? Okay, and now the walk of shame. Have you ever printed out a website? Yes, a few. I, I've done so as well. Uh, at the same time, you may think, Printing a website? Are you serious? No, this is not the idea. Print CSS nevertheless has many similarities with the web, and this is exactly what I would like to explain to you. First of all, what uh, CSS is and what print CSS is, what are the benefits of print CSS, and then I would also like to allude to whether print CSS is already fit for the practice, the everyday practice, or not. Print is CSS and CSS. What is this? When you open a website, then you have three different code languages, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. JavaScript is used for animations, for validations of contact forms, for instance, CSS for the styling of websites, and HTML for the content. This is what a website is all about. This is clear, I guess. But when you go to a website and press Command P, so start to print a website, then you use a so-called media query for print. This has been around since CSS2, so for quite a while. So I can actually write um, into this document um, what the website should look like when it is printed out. A classical example is, of course, a page with black background and white text. When I print it out, I want to have black text, black font on a white background. This is the classic for media query in print. And I brought an example, another example. This is a video. Huh, works fine. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, uh, but the charts are available for you later. The principle is a classical one. There is a news uh, page with a header, and there are certain stylings, and they are minimized when you print it out. This is the classic for the practical use of CSS2 uh, for the media course. But this is not what we mean when we see say print CSS. What we mean is the paged media module by CSS3. So this is what really is cool. Print CSS, it's only a colloquial term. Very often people think uh, of the paged media model. A paged media model can do so much more than a media query. You can not only change a background color, but you can also um, change what print needs. Uh, special colors, bleed, footnotes, uh, things um, that you require first and foremost for print. So the paged media module from CSS3 was written for print. The uh, uh, interesting side fact is probably that those developing the page media model have also developed CSS. So it is uh, web developers who invented CSS and who now worked on the paged media model. I think this is exciting for industry to know that an innovation comes from a web for us. Well, if you want to have more information, this is the link to the charts. The CSS uh, uh, media module, the paged media module, is described very well there for the encoders amongst us here. When we printed a website, the CSS was actually rendered with a browser. So with my computer, I go to the website, click, 
print and then my browser renders the PDF. This is the classic way. The problem is that most browsers don't do rendering the same way. So when Zönke renders this uh, in his browser, then it looks slightly different from the uh, view or the layout in my computer. So this is a huge problem. You're all uh, familiar with print it's impossible. So this is why in print CSS uh, you work with so-called renderers. I've uh, actually drawn it here. Print CSS works as follows. We've got the three files, HTML or uh, in print CSS also XML, then the CSS with the page media rules and maybe we have JavaScript in print CSS you need it for, for diagrams for instance. And then we generate this and we don't send it to a browser but to an API that actually is connected to a renderer. This allows us to make it always look the same I set the renderer, close my database or link my database with this renderer through an API and know exactly that it will always look the same without actually changing it in print design. The various renderers, I will talk about these a little later. And above the renderer, uh, while this renderer, I sent back a PDF. So the result is not a designable thing, but it's a finished PDF file. This is how uh, print CSS works. But what are the benefits uh, of this? The first benefit is, of course, that we can use one language for several channels. What we used for the web before can now be copied, slightly changed for print. In practice, this is easily done. So when you just have the standard fonts, colors, font size, if you can copy this, then we're a lot faster than actually copying it or redesigning it in, in design. This is one little benefit. Another big benefit is the popularity of CSS. I know no web developers who are is not or are not aware of CSS. So this technology is very widespread. Of course, not in the print environment, but in the ID, IT industry. And CSS is not as complex as uh, other code languages. It is easy to learn. Another benefit uh, which is of a more strategic nature uh, is there a separation of style and content. The classical design systems always work on the basis of a database. You've heard this term a thousand times yesterday and today. So we have a database and then um, this database sends elements to somewhere. And in classical process in InDesign, there are many changes introduced. Then the proofreadings, correction uh, loops uh, that are not fed to the database magically. And this is a problem. With print CSS, we don't experience this problem because we cannot interfere. Once the content in the um, uh, database is wrong and in the style sheet, then the PDF is also incorrect. So there's a seamless way from content to the resulting PDF. This can be a drawback because you can no longer intervene, but very often is a benefit because the process does not allow you to interfere with the content. In our project, it is often a benefit that you go direct and not via a style program. This separation is important. I'm not weighing things. There are projects where it is worthwhile using InDesign. In our uh, projects, we also use PIM and uh, DAM databases. It makes sense there. But there are other projects where the design is always the same. And such additional steps through an InDesign program can just be a detour that may be even dangerous, or at least they're time consuming. Another benefit is, of course, the price. The only price you pay is the development of the templates. Uh, you have to write the CSS. This uh, uh, requires some effort, but once it's done, you only have the renderer's costs, uh, the little cloud I showed you a while ago. You need this. 
and uh, you can actually select it yourself and you can see and select how much it uh, costs. Uh, they even open source renderers and you can actually install your own server and the prices are slow. It really depends on how many PDFs you want to generate. But this is definitely an important point. The prices are clearly lower than doing it uh, with an InDesign, uh, InDesign server. Are there any questions so far or any remarks so far? What are the typical applications? I'll show that uh, later, but the classics are schematic uh, um, menu cards, data sheets, everything that changes in terms of content, but always looks the same. But this only refers to one page? Or what about the combinations of one, two, three, or four pages? Then I need this interim layer uh, to to introduce changes. This is a good question and good point. It depends on how good your database is and uh, how well the print CSS has been written. We at Morantark work with PIP combined with print CSS so we can also generate queries. So there are post types and categories that we can uh, query and uh, push them to certain points in the PDF. So you can basically program it into, into the CSS. But this is a database solution. Uh, this is not solved by print CSS. You have to solve it yourself. But you can do it with several pages. I will later show an example. Um, you can uh, do page planning and editorial planning with it very well. The paged media module, as the name says it, refers to paged media, media that have pages. A website, uh, a website doesn't have any pages. You sim simply scroll through it. And the paged media module refers to individual pages. So after a title with a tag H3, uh, there should be a page break. Um, so this needs to be laid down in the, the rules and this uh, is also then possible for several pages. Um, a, uh, RGB colors are supported but there are some renderers that can also work with CMYK. Then I know of renderers that actually work with RGB and then convert it into a PDF. It really depends on the renderer. There are also renders that actually use or support uh, spot uh, uh, colors, but this is more of the high-end renders. Okay, then... Uh, um, is print CSS already uh, fit for use today? That's a good question. Well, my answer is it depends. The longer answer is that uh, you have to really look at the use case. If the requirement is uh, to push something to a layout and that I can change it afterwards, then you won't be happy with print CSS because this is not the concept. I uh, worked, I was in contact with Adobe several times. They wanted to know whether they could actually edit print CSS uh, via InDesign. But this is not possible because you always end up with a finished PDF. So you should never forget when you work with print CSS that you always end up with a finished product, the finished PDF. You can no longer re-edit. You can actually rewrite the CSS, yeah. But then you uh, actually touch the template. But there are also applications where this is just the right thing to go for. I'll show you this page if you're interested. This is a hip page. Um, uh, print uh, p CSS pr uh, dot rocks. Um, and you can see there the uh, functionalities are supported by which renderers. The uh, CMYK question could be answered here. Uh, I have done a little screenshot. The page is very long. So if you wonder whether print CSS can do X, Y, Z, then please look it up there because this is always up to date. And I can show this page maybe. Well, under lessons you can find this and there are also examples featured for everything and you can click on the examples. Let's select uh, hyphenation. 
line breaks, yeah, hyphenation. And there are uh, PDF examples for each renderer. I can have a look at this in German and in English. This is without hyphenation. This is without, with hyphenation. Yeah, right. If you wonder what uh, works and what doesn't work, then please look it up here. I have uh, two more examples of how we use it as an agency. For instance, we have a menu card project for a customer. So this is the menu card on the web and printed. It. It's new every single week. And this is uh, automatically distributed so far. The process uh, was as follows. The uh, chef actually jotted down the menu, sent it to the uh, secretary. It was actually um, uh, printed in Word and poorly designed, printed out. I don't want to attack anybody, but they didn't have any time to do it. It was just fit for purpose. Now, we have created a web interface based on uh, WordPress, and this allows the chef to actually fill it in. They have text boxes, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever, and then they save it, and from this minute, the PDF is basically available, fully designed. This is a classic uh, example where InDesign would only be a detour and the QR code um, where you can actually download the videos so for you to see the back end and the rendering. So when I enter this and then say produce a PDF file takes 10 seconds, including the API. Yeah. Another example comes from the editorial world. This is an editorial planning. This is not the finished magazine. It's just a page uh, planning, editorial planning for the authors, for the uh, Wellenbrecher magazine. And um, they always want to discuss about the pages uh, uh, on the basis of uh, prints. Um, they often printed it out, then the uh, printouts were not really fit for purpose. And now they can uh, readily print it out. For them, it was the perfect solution, especially because they can actually print it out on day X. And then this is really the current version because it's constantly updated in real time. If they actually change the title in real time, it would automatically be changed. Um, so this is an editorial planning example. And uh, when you look at the project as a whole, the whole Wellenbrecher magazine, then the project is actually an InDesign project. Uh, the content is captured in the database, end up in InDesign, and then the magazine is designed. So uh, print uh, CSS is only used for the editors. So you can combine these uh, well. Of course, certain articles, individual articles, can also be uh, placed in InDesign after you've generated a PDF because you don't want any extra design for specific articles. So uh, you can think about combining the PDFs with InDesign. Then an answer to your question, what is possible to do? I have listed some ideas here, but um, you can do more. Menu cards, catalogs, uh, data sheets would be possible. We are running a uh, project uh, from an online shop or web shop. Um, it is about data sheets on uh, occupational safety, then annual reports, because with JavaScript, you can also generate diagrams. I simply enter the uh, figures and I have the diagrams in PDF. And on the web, uh, these diagrams are interactive. So we're no longer embedding images. You could do project uh, references or um, uh, I capture my references on the website and I go and see customer Maya and he's probably interested in these three references I exported, then enter the customer name and actually print out a beautiful PDF. 
So these are references that uh, might be of interest to you. So you can think further. Personalization is also very easy in Print CSS because it works with placeholders. The project that we are currently discussing is scientific publications because here too there are many specs and there are many footnotes and complex things that an InDesign project uh, uh, would find very hard to um, cope with. What's so great about Print CSS, as I said, we've got HTML or XML, so I can um, show it in a different way in the web view. Um, in the footnotes in print, they're not clickable, but in, on the web, they're clickable. Then, um, Belletristics, um, Print CSS has been in operation there. Very small publishing houses uh, produce ebooks this way, and they generate the printouts through Print CSS. So this has really become a standard there for the small publishing houses. These are some ideas. Maybe you have more ideas to add. For us, Print CSS is really the way to go for the uh, super simple designs that always look the same. The designs can look like a website in terms of creativity. Uh, there are basically no limits. You can do many different things. We will therefore um, actually launch a plugin for WordPress uh, uh, that can do print CSS because we think uh, print CSS has the potential not only for web technology but also for uh, print technology. Uh, any questions or remarks or insecurities? What is the process? I have a print CSS and can I copy and adapt it? Normally you have two style sheets, separate two separate files, yes. And afterwards the process depends on whether you work with the CMS or not. This also means that you can also use the CSS or the HTML file that is saved somewhere and then actually export it to the renderer on day X. From Word uh, um, files you can export HTML so you could actually turn this into a PDF. These processes can vary widely but in our projects we have a website sheet that is completely separate of the, the style sheet, the print style sheet and when we write the print style sheets then we of course copy the same uh, elements like branding specifications. You Have you done something about uh, the three version? No, we focus on WordPress. I wasn't aware there's something available for Typo 3 but it should be possible. Uh, but Typo 3 also has an SQL database so it should be possible. Sorry. One problem is often the preview. Um, what about uh, a print CSS? That's true. Rendering doesn't take long as a rule. Uh, 120 page books takes uh, 10 seconds for rendering if you program it well. So you generate the PDF in 10 seconds. And in development, we work with online tools. There's uh, printcss.live, for instance. I can show it quickly. Oh, no internet. Oh, there. Okay, without a hyphen, right. This is not a rendering, it's a preview process. And in CSS, in the CSS box, I can rewrite elements and uh, use it in this way. This can also be saved or exported by clicking on share click and then you click on an ID which you can share our coders uh, write it like this when they write something new. Here you can also beautifully see how the paged media module adds various uh, policies like the page uh, size or format. Um, then the bleed is uh, defined uh, 
then of course the uh, page sides, the up page. This is the main thing that is new compared to the classical CSS. So apart from the page margins, what you can do. Okay. You also have projects that uh, are also exported as a printed uh, document. So when I have the CMYK images, they have to have a certain resolution. Are they actually uh, kept in the database as an alternative or do you have a repository for this? Well, with in WordPress, we work with the database and not with the web uh, printout. So we get the images from the database. This is possible to do, but you simply have to uh, uh, actually find this before. It's a question of the database, but this is of course, as you said, an important topic. Yes? With catalogs, you often have content that spreads over several pages. And you have tables, for instance. Uh, uh, what about print CSS here? This really depends on the renderer. Tables uh, are not a problem. You can also g go to several pages. The important thing is that you find the right rules or define the right rules that you actually do the pagination, right? The page breaks. So you have to have a solid data modeling, clean data, and all parties are aware how to actually do the page break. But this is a problem that can be solved. Z is the data then spread on the following pages or at uh, times I d don't even know whether the text is longer or shorter and how much of the table actually ends up on the first or in the second page. Um, is how dynamic is CSS? CSS is never dynamic. You tell the CSS if you have this, do that. It's not uh, like JavaScript, uh, the, there's not a lot of calculation possible. What you can always do is program in CMS. Um, this is how I would solve it uh, as a non-coder. So when I have a line, then I add this information, a line break. Or you can introduce no break classes. Please do not make a page break here. Or for instance, after a title before the, the copy, don't actually um, do a page break. This is the classic for this one. Maybe uh, an add-on um, is, is of course also important to have it in the database and it stays uh, channel independent or channel agnostic. So just doing it for the PDF would not be uh, really helpful. But this is a content first topic again. Any other questions or remarks? Okay, then I would like to thank you for being with us and look forward to the next print day. This one is almost over now. <laughs>